Okay, so we've got ourselves a database, we've got a data layer. Now let's um, fire up Axum and create a REST API to consume it. So uh, Axum is very similar to Express on Node.js in the sense that when you uh, fire it up, you specify a router or router, depending on which country you're in. Um, and that router maps between uh, URL routes and functions and the verb that activates them. So in this case, uh, we want the root of our router to uh, fire a get, all, um, fire the verb, when for a get request, the verb, we call get all books, which we'll write in a moment. Likewise, um, if for a get book, which will just be one book, you get a you know, slash colon, a slash, and then an ID number. And we represent that as colon ID. You'll have a look at how that works in a moment. Um, Axum makes a lot of this very, very straightforward. Um, it's very easy to read. You can see that slash add goes to a post method to update a book. Slash edit puts an update to the book. Slash delete with an ID number deletes a book. So it's a relatively, um, relatively straightforward mapping. I've created a file called rest.rs that exposes all of this. And so function called book service and it's often handy to um, have a have a function for each service that you're going to be exposing that returns that because then the, the master can map where you want it to go um, pretty straightforward so over in main we're going to um, we want to make sure that first of all the, the uh, web server knows what it's serving and we also want to make sure that the web server listens to the network and actually um, handles traffic coming in. And so the we create a new function called router. And the reason I'm putting this in a function and not in the main function is that I also want to be able to access this from unit tests without running the whole main function every time. And so this also returns a router. This is where it gets a little more complicated. We may, um, in this one, we make a new router, and then we use nest service with the books service. And what nest service does is it allows you to specify the parent on the URL chain. So in this case, slash books, and then attach all of the services that are returned by the function it calls below that. And so where we put slash for get all books, it's actually going to be slash books. And this is really, really nice when you're building a big complicated service and you want to logically express a bunch of different services, keep your concerns separated in your code, spread everything out nicely. And so in the main function, we still got .env getting our environment variables set up. We still build the connection pool. We um, call the router to make the app. And you'll notice the one last thing we're doing here is that we call .layer, which adds a um, dependency injection layer to our Axum service. And in this case, we're putting the connection pool into the web server. And now any web server um, function that gets called that includes that in its parameters will automatically um, get the connection pool. And so we don't have to worry about trying to make a static, share it, or any of that. Axum does it for us, actually using a service under the hood called Tower. Um, Tower is a very, very powerful system. Um, it in turn utilizes Hyper. I mean, Takio is part of, is um, Takio, um, underneath that, and this is all written by the Takio team. Um, Axum, as a result, uh, utilizes this and offers a pretty nice clean API. Okay, so now, now that we know where to map things and offer the connection pool as a service, uh, we set our listen address, which in this case, I'm listening on um, any IP address, port 3001. So we bind the Axum server, Axum server bind to that address. We call dot serve, and our router type implements a function called make into service, which can, turns it into a tower service. Off it goes. It's running. We're awaiting it. It's not actually going to return unless the web server dies completely. So at this point, the program will just sit at that point um, being a server. Hi, I'm Herbert Wolferson, Arden Labs' Rust trainer. If you'd like to see more Rust content, click subscribe to our channel and be notified as it arrives.